and welcome to another GLHF Board Games How to Play. I'm Nicholas, your GLHF Game Guy, and I'm going to teach you Kites from Floodgate Games. Designer Kevin Hamano brings the game to your table, featuring the art of channel favorite Beth Sobel. Kites is a game for two to six players, which plays in 10 minutes or less. For those new to our videos, we separate our how to plays into three parts. The pitch, which will give you the setup and main thrust of the game. The play, which explains how a turn works and the game's main mechanics. And finally, the prestige, which will go over scoring and the game's end. Each of these are bookmarked on the time bar below for your convenience. Up to the highest height, let's go fly a kite. Kites is a fast-paced game of card and timer management, challenging you and up to five of your friends to keep these bits of paper flying high. The individual kites are represented by these colored timers, each of which has a different duration. The timers are in rainbow order, if that helps you to remember. The longest is the purple kite at 90 seconds, followed by the blue at 75. Both the yellow and white timers are at a minute, and the orange timer is 45 seconds. Finally, the speedy red timer gives you a scant 30 seconds. The players collectively win the game by playing all the cards from their deck and their hands before any single timer runs out of sand. If a timer runs out, the game immediately ends and you will score points based on how many cards were left unplayed. We're set up here for our standard three-player game. Each of the timers is set on their sides with all the sand at one end or the other on each. Kites includes three difficulty levels out of the box. If you are a beginner to real-time play, cooperative games, or just want a very low barrier to entry, start your first game by removing any cards in the deck that contain the purple or orange symbols, as well as the purple and orange timers. Standard games will include them, and experienced players can include any or all of the three additional challenge card types. Our base game here will include all of the colored cards, but leave out the challenge cards for now. All the chosen cards are shuffled into a deck, and then based on player count, you'll deal out some to each player. For our three-player game, each player will get five cards. If you're playing with four players, each person will get four, and with five or six players, you'll each get three. Separate out the remaining cards into roughly equal stacks and place them within easy reach of all players. If you'd prefer to have just one stack, that's fine. Just make sure that each player can get to the stack without too much effort. You want to keep this game light and breezy. The start player can be randomly chosen, or if you prefer, the last player to fly a kite. Once your kites are in the air, they have to stay up there or the game is over, so make sure everyone is familiar with the rules and ready before you begin. When the wind is blowing and you're all set, stand up the white timer and pick up your hand of cards. Starting with the first player, on your turn, you will play a card and flip over the timer or timers indicated by the icons on that card. If the timer is still on its side from the beginning of the game, you'll stand it up with the sand on top. If you play a card with a single icon on it, like this one, you can choose instead to flip the white timer. To reiterate, if the card has two different icons on it, both of those timers should be flipped, but you cannot flip the white timer. Draw a new card from any draw pile, and then the next player should immediately start their turn by playing their card down, flipping a timer or two, and then redrawing and passing the turn again. Of note, it's considered acceptable for the next player to play their card before a current player draws from a deck. Around and around you'll go like this, making sure that no timer runs out. During play, communication is allowed and encouraged. Make sure that the other players know how best you can help and what you're planning to do. While communicating everything that's in your hand might be a little too cumbersome, keeping tabs on the lowest timers and what you can do about them will keep all your kites soaring. If you manage to draw the last card from the piles around the table, you've reached the grand finale. The white timer can no longer be flipped by anyone, so you'll have whatever time is left on that timer, at most 60 seconds, to run out all your cards. Before we get to endgame scoring, now that you have an idea of how the game works, we can talk about the additional challenge cards. As mentioned before, you can include one, two, or all three sets into your games as desired. To include these, add all the cards of one or more sets before shuffling the deck at the beginning. The first challenge is the Storm. 
When drawn, you must announce that a storm is coming, and then on your next turn, you must play the drawn storm card. When played, you, and only you, must flip each individual timer over, including the white one. This will complete your turn. The second challenge card is the crossed lines. When drawn, you will not announce that you've drawn it, but you must play it on your next turn. When played, you'll say crossed lines, and each player will pass a single card from their hand to the player on their left and the player on their right. The card passed to you may be the card passed to the next player if you wish. Finally, the last challenge card is the airplane. Again, when drawn, you will not announce this card, but you must play it on your next turn. When played, say airplane, and players may not speak until you play a card on the following turn. This would include if another player draws a storm or another airplane, so be sure to pay attention to the airplane until it passes completely overhead. The game immediately ends when either the last card is played or a single timer runs out of sand. If you manage to play every single card down with all the timers going, congratulations. You've successfully put on a spectacular show and are ready to add the challenge cards. If you weren't able to play all the cards, count up what's left, both in draw piles and player hands. That's your score for the game. With the fewer total cards, the better. Shuffle the deck back up and play again, this time trying to beat that score. Thank you for watching this GLHF How to Play video. If you found it informative, please let us know in the comments. Also, please keep in mind that this is a sponsored video representing the game and rules in the box at the time of production. Future print runs may contain additional expansion content, errata, or other rule changes. I'm Nicholas, reminding you to help protect the game population. Always leave your cards. <laughs>